Hello everyone, Jonathan Kiley here with Fly Skins. Uh, today I'm going to show you a damselfly, something that people have been asking me to do a video for for a while now. I'm just getting around to doing it. So here it is. So I'm um, starting with a Daiichi. This is that nymph, uh, natural nymph end hook. Um, this is size 8. I like this one. I've used a bunch of different hooks, but I do like this one. Uh, it'll set the tail off uh, to the back a little bit, um, and then it'll allow it to wiggle a little bit more, and then this obviously gives a little more of a curve. So it's also got a smaller gape, which is good because uh, bluegill, especially uh, around here, just go nuts on it uh, down south Georgia. But um, if you use too wide of a gape, obviously they're going to have a hard time putting it in their mouth. So I've used this um, particular one for bluegill. You can use a shorter one, you can use a longer one, whatever you want to do. This one's pretty universal as far as how you can set it up. So I'm going to show you um, one with an exoskin brown and olive back or thorax and then of course the Kylie's damsel tails uh, this uh, medium these come in black tan and olive uh, there's a small medium and large tail in each pack and um, uh, there's 12 in a pack there's even even amount of each okay so I'm going to use Vivas UTC 60 thread brown use olive as well obviously I'm gonna just do a thread base here I'm gonna go to right about here I'm gonna leave a little bit of space because I'm gonna just stop there I want the tail to actually kind of springboard off the back this one's gonna have um, also it's gonna have the hairline shaggy dub which is like a natural blend of um, rabbit hair and some rubber legs in it so it kind of takes a little bit of the extra work out of actually adding the legs okay so I got a good thread base here nice and rough I'm not looking for touching threads or anything crazy like that what I'm going to do first I'm going to take some rabbit zonker and I like to tie it under the tail kind of gives it uh, a little bit of dimension to the uh, to the bottom So I'm just going to tie a little piece off the back, like this. Okay. Next part is going to be the tail. I'm going to place that so that pretty much the tips even with it right there. See how that does? It gives it more of a three-dimensional look versus two-dimensional. Tie in the tie tab. And then what I like to do is I'd like to take just a little drop of super glue to bond that leather to the tail. If you put it just on the tip, it'll keep it from being too stiff, just on the end there. Make sure it's even. And it pretty much instantly bonds. There. Still flexible stiffer keep it from fouling all right so the next part I'm gonna take my exoskin cut a strip of it use my razor scissors I'm gonna go about I don't know a little bit less than a quarter inch strip here like that okay Tie in this. Now this one's going to have a little bit longer thorax. That's cool. Probably the normal. Maybe it'll look like it's uh, in between stages here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead. I have some foam. I just cut into a strip. I'm going to use that to help keep it just sub subsurface. reason why is because I want this to either basically so slowly descend or just kind of sit in the film of the water. I'm going to work my way forward here. I'm going to add some eyes. These are just the hairlines, uh, mono eyes here. These are the uh, smalls and mediums. I can't remember. I believe they're the, the mediums. I think there's a small and an extra small as well. Basically, you're going to choose whatever size fits whatever flyer you're making here. So 
that's up to you. Basically, cross these in. See? I like going extra underneath between the hook shank and the eye. Let's make these a little more rigid. Okay. Now one thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a dubbing loop. Make a little one here, about maybe three and a half inches long using three threads worth. Now I'm only going to go a quarter inch, of, actually I'm going to go a two stage thorax here so I'm going to split the difference there. Alright, so I'm going to take the dubbing. I already have mine split up in the little container here. This is the white olive with the black. If you can want to look at it, it's got the rubber legs already built into it. So it kind of helps you out. You don't have to add the legs. It's already there. I'm going to elongate these. Basically, now this is where dubbing wax would be useful because uh, this stuff is a little bit smaller strand so it makes it a little more difficult but you can do it without just kind of slide it in there work it up add a little more you'll lose a lot of it when you start spinning it so make sure there's a healthy amount in there all right that should be good spin it there it goes <laughs> all right so I want to work to that halfway point and then tie it off. Trim that. Okay. Kind of force that down here. I'm going to fold my foam over. Make sure your foam is smaller than the exoskin because, uh, well, then it'll actually kind of hide the foam. Not that it really matters, I'm not sure it really does, but bring the XO over, cinch it down. Okay, move this out of the way. I'm gonna do another dubbing loop here. Foam's kind of in the way. That's okay. We'll get there. Go right behind the eye. I like this dubbing as well for smaller crayfish patterns, kind of like that log slider I showed not too long ago. This works great to scale it down. You can check out all the videos that I have on YouTube so far. If you just type in fly skins with a Z, and they'll come up, or the title of whatever fly I'm showing it off as on Instagram or Facebook. Okay, put some of that in there. Spin it up. And here. A lot of extra dubbing here. Probably a little too much, maybe. It's okay. I'm gonna fold it over towards the front because I want a little bit of bulk in front of the eyes. Anyway, so. Okay, I'm gonna cross right over behind the eyes there. Work that foam or the dubbing down. Pull the foam over. I'm actually going to cut this foam off here. Or maybe I'll leave it. I think I'll leave it this time. Build up the head a little bit. Give me a little more buoyancy. Pinch this down. Work my way forward here. One last little bit of foam. So I want to make sure you leave space where the eye is because otherwise it'll be crowded right now. Foam off. Now this time I'm going to stretch the skin pretty good here. 
just to get it closed off. Get that done. Stretch it, cut it, and I'll finish this off. That was close. Alright, so now what I want to do, a little lip finish here. Now you could leave it like that, but typically what I like to do is uh, brush this thing out, really pop those legs out, and if you have to get the comb part of this, I use a stone foe brush, it's got velcro on one side, a little brush on the other, makes a super awesome bug to skim the surface of the water. Another thing I like doing, I'll take a lighter, I get a fuzz in front of the eye like that, you just come up, barely touch it, and that will clean it up. Little trick there. And then of course, add a little super glue or whatever you want to the edge there, but it's, that's it folks. Super easy, fun fly to fish. You can fish this thing all summer, spring, fall, they'll still hit it. I've caught bluegill, trout, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass on this thing, warmouth, bowfin, I mean, super diverse pattern. Um, that's kind of what you're looking for to keep in your box. Olive, black, tan, all great colors. I use them all in my box. You know, of course, it depends on water color. So the tan, uh, olive, those those have been working great for me in the in the in the dark tannic water. Um, olive is pretty much a go-to color. Black. Black, of course, works great too. Of course, this could be mistaken as a helgramite, I'm sure, and trout waters too. Uh, you could you could use it in moving water as well as you could still. So, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.